Hey everybody, it is Scott, the Treasure Coast Picker, and I am back in New Jersey after two months in Florida. Uh, unfortunately, the thrifting in Florida was not great. I did get some things, which I'm going to show you here, but uh, I, I uh, don't know why. Things just were not, they just maybe people are holding on to their stuff more now with the economy the way it is. I'm just not sure why, but uh, it was tough getting stuff, And uh, but I did get stuff, so I want to show you that. Uh, when I go to Florida, I shut down my eBay store, which basically kills my sales. You know, I have about 450, 70, 475 items, and I shut those down, and when I go to Florida, then I start putting up the things that I'm purchasing down there. So maybe by the end of my Florida trip, I've got 40 to 50 items for sale, and, you know, that's not a lot. That's not enough to choose from. So my sales tanked during these last two months, and now I've got to try and build it back up again. I've already got almost 300 items listed back up again, plus I have all these things I want to show you. And uh, we've got mugs. Cups, teddy bears, Funko Pops, clothing, and we got some paper stuff, which is a new area that I've gotten into. So let's start with um, this is teddy bear. I keep bending out of camera range because I can't reach the stuff. This is a Land Rover teddy bear. He cost me $6.50, which is a bit more than I'd like to pay. But he's brand new, and he's called, I think he's called the Adventure Bear. Now, uh, I don't have a Land Rover. I, you know, I can't afford a Land Rover and uh, could barely afford the bear at six fifty. But he's brand new with his tags. Very cute. It has a little satchel on the side. And I guess uh, people are only, uh, I guess they're sold by Land Rover dealers. I'm not sure where you get these originally, but that's what it would sound like to me. In any case, comps on these are in the 25 to 30 range. There are a couple of different versions of him. Uh, I think he's called the Adventurer. And uh, we'll see what we can do with him. Paid six fifty, hoping to get about 30 Our next teddy bear, and our other, the only teddy bear we have, if the batteries don't fall out, uh, is this guy. He's called Noah. And I purchased two of these at a, um, uh, a Humane Society thrift store. And I went up to the front. I said, do you have batteries to test them? And they were like, oh, no, they've all been tested. Don't worry about that, blah, blah, blah. And so I bought these for three bucks a piece. And, of course, I get home, and the other one is missing part of the battery compartment. In other words, one of the terminals was snapped off, the metal terminal. So there was no way you could get that bear to work. But what happens, if I haven't turned on here, he... Um, this one is called a friend bear, I think, friends. And you press the button. Of all the things you can make in life, remember a friend is someone who makes a difference. A friend is someone you want to thank for a thousand things in a thousand ways. Thanks for waiting. Uh, I'm not sure that voice is kid-friendly, but uh, <laughs> for $3, and three dollars, I thought, what the heck. And since the other one didn't work, you know, they told me it was guaranteed for three days I could bring it back. I wasn't going to bust them for $3 or $3.50. I mean, it was a charity, a main society charity. So, you know, I just let it slide. I let it slide. So the other one is uh, down in Florida, and uh, I don't think there's any way I can fix them. I'm short of getting a new battery compartment, and that's not going to happen. So not worth the effort. But this guy's pretty cute. I don't sure, I'm not sure what he'll go for. He's got his tags. He still has his price on him. i got to take that off. And um, we'll see what we can get for this uh, talking uh, friend teddy bear. All right. Popped into Disney. Um, didn't get much of Disney. I got some things for myself. I found this for $1.99. It's, 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 you can see this, the price here is $35, $34.99. And it's a Minnie Mouse iPhone case. Uh, for $1.99, I took a chance on it. It is not for the current iPhone. It's for the older phones. Um, 6 Plus, 6S Plus, 7 Plus, 8 Plus. I have a 7 Plus, so this would fit my phone, but... I don't think I would look good carrying a Minnie Mouse uh, phone case with me. But uh, we'll see what we can get for it. I mean, it paid a dollar ninety nine, so well, you know, you get ten, fifteen dollars, it's profit. Bobbleheads. Bobbleheads. This guy, I'm not gonna take him out of the box because he's new in the box. You can see he's four ninety nine. I gotta see if I can get that sticker off without causing too much sticker shock to the package. This is Randy White of um, the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, but it's not an official Dallas Cowboy uh, and Scott is, it, 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 it's a product of the Smoky Mountain Chewing Tobacco Company. Apparently, he's a spokesman for this company, and they put out these uh, these dolls. And uh, I think I can probably get about 20 for this. I paid 5 so maybe 20 25 for Randy White. There's got to be some, some cowboy fans out there who want this Randy White uh, Hall of Fame bobblehead. Another bobblehead is the New York Jets. Ugh. And I'm not going to take them out of the... Well, I am going to take them out of the package, because what fun is looking at a package, right? This is... I'm going to come out as far as we, 
This is the Incredible Hulk um, New York Jets uh, bobblehead, I guess. It's uh, sponsored by Toyota. So this must have been a uh, stadium giveaway, I would imagine. And it's really big. And this was, uh, let me think I have the price of it. I think he was $4. Might have been even less than that. But anyway, $4. And people like it. It's a crossover deal because you got the New York Jets. you got the Incredible Hulk. Um, I don't think he's wearing any Jets uh, paraphernalia, but he is green. I guess that's maybe why they went with it. The old green and white set of Jets colors. But anyway, $4. Uh, hopefully we can get, you know, 25 30 for this guy. Let's do some clothing. Because uh, well, this I didn't buy. I didn't buy it this time. I bought this years ago. It's been sitting in my closet in Florida. And it is a Disney Parks long sleeve shirt. But it has this kind of roll up sleeve with a, with a strap. So I'm not sure what you call it. Maybe you just call it a roll up sleeve. I'm not sure. But you, have a, you, you can wear it as a long sleeve. Or you can wear it as a short sleeve. And the cool thing about it is if you can see close, it's got this wonderful overall design of all these different uh, uh, features at Disney World. At Disney Parks, is there's, um, I mean, it's, there's a steamboat, there's there's the Epcot, there's Main Street USA, there's the, the big ball in the, in, the, in the Epcot ball. There's all kinds of little Disney icons on this thing. Uh, Jungle Cruise. Splash Mountain. I mean, there's just a ton of different little items on this shirt. It's really cool. I realized I was never going to wear it. It sat in the closet in Florida for about three or four years. I said, let me take it home and list it. Okay. Now, I bought some Foot Joy shirts. Let me tell you, I bought these Foot Joy shirts just before I left for Florida. These I got these in New Jersey. I bought 13 Foot Joy golf shirts and um, $3 a piece. Footjoy is a brand I love to sell, and I want to show you what they normally look like. And I don't, here's one here. Normally, a Footjoy shirt will look like this. It'll have the Footjoy logo in the, in the thing. It'll have a, usually some kind of an insignia from like a country club here, and it might have something on the sleeve. In this case, it's uh, Robert Trent, Robert Trent Golf Trail, which I think is in Florida. This one I, this one I bought in Florida. And it says Ross Bridge, which is probably a country club. And there's a foot joy in the back. So most foot joy shirts look like this, but they have some stripes. Or this group of 13 that I bought were much different. They were all patterned. So I took them with me to Florida. This is a, uh, you can probably say it's a kind of a houndstooth pattern in gray. This is a, I call it clouds, but it's little, it's like little white puffy clouds on a blue field. And these are the most conservative ones. Uh, and this one is uh, another gray check. So out of the 13 I had, I sold 10 of them while I was in Florida. I brought them with me, listed them, and boom, boom, boom. I got between $25 and $35 a piece, actually $40. Uh, the highest one I sold was $39.90. And uh, I made a ton of money on these. And so keep your eye out for foot joy, especially these with the patterns like this. You know, the normal ones, these don't have any golf... Um, Insignias on them. They do have the Foot Joy on the back, the FJ logo. Uh, very unusual. I've, I've discovered they're probably about two or three years old. I don't know if they still produce these, but keep an eye out for the patterned Foot Joy shirts. They do really, really well. I said I, I sold 10 of them in, in, in like a month and a half. Uh, more shirts. This is a great shirt. I love this. I don't know if I showed this. No, I didn't show this shirt. This is the uh, Kahala Hula Cycle shirt. It's motorcycles and uh, Hula Island cycles, it says. And it's girls riding motorcycles. I mean, this has got to be a winner, no matter what. I had one of these before, maybe a month or two ago. But this is the, so this is the second one I found. And uh, got this one uh, down in Florida. I paid uh, $4, and uh, it's got to be a winner. This shirt was $2, and it's an ESPN shirt from the uh, Sports Network. And it's all kinds of ESPN icons. Uh, it was two dollars, and there's, there's things on there that's uh, sports, sports Center, Sunday Night Football. Uh, what else is on there? Uh, National Hockey Night. There's some baseball stuff on here. All these little symbols. I guess of all the different uh, ESPN shows and programs that they have. So this was only two dollars. There's some kind of baseball scene there, and uh, golf. There's a golf thing. So whatever whatever sport you're into, and it's got the palm trees in the background to give it that that Hawaiian look. So uh, this was uh, two bucks. The uh, size is all faded out here, so I know it's not a, it's not new. It's vintage, probably the 90s. 
Now this shirt I paid up for. This shirt I paid, I believe I paid $12 for this shirt, but this shirt's only a year old. This, Tommy Bahama introduced this shirt last year. I know that because I bought one from Tommy Bahama at, uh, well, I had a $50 coupon, so I did get a discount. This shirt was $12 at a store in the uh, um, Fort Lauderdale area, and it's a Tommy Bahama, and it's all tiki, uh, tiki mugs. Now, you know, I don't know why they put this, they donated this shirt. It's a cool shirt, and uh, it's only, like I say, a year old. So this one is a medium. Uh, I'm going to put it up for some good money. I'm going to put it up for probably around 50 or $60 because, uh, you know, brand new, they were $118, brand new. So this one, you know, I'm going to try and get like, you know, 50 to 60 on this one. And uh, I paid uh, 12 which is probably more than I would like to pay, but I know what I had. Don't you hate that phrase? I know what I had. Something blast from the past here. Actually, let me give you something else. Easter is coming. And it's coming too soon because it's this week, and I thought, oh, I'll get these. Everyone talks about Ray Dunn. Oh, you got to get Ray Dunn stuff. Now, I never had any Ray Dunn stuff before, but I bought these little chickens, little chicks. They're not, they don't, they don't do anything. They're just figurines. They're not salt and pepper shakers or anything like that. They're just four little figurines, and they spell out peep. I said, this is a surefire winner for Easter. I paid $4 for this, and, you know, I've got crickets <laughs> from, from chickens to crickets because nobody has, has even inquired about these things. They sell for around $16, so I'm not going to make a lot of money on them. But mine, I have not been able to get a nibble on. And, uh, you know, I've got them listed probably probably in that $16, $17 range. And uh, I paid four. So these may be hanging around after Easter because Easter is this Sunday and today's Wednesday. So. All right, let's see what else we can uh, throw at you here. Let's do some mugs. I saw this mug. It said a friend of, it was $2. It was a, it was, uh, actually it was, uh, well, the original price was nineteen ninety five. so it's never been, it's never been washed, I think, because the sticker's are still on there. But I paid $2, and it's a, by, by somebody named Glenn Hansen, and the artist said Glenn Hansen. I looked up his stuff. He does a lot of character work. Uh, I looked at this, and I thought, oh, Maud. You know, this is, this is uh, uh, what's it in the actress who played Maud. But then I realized it's a friend of uh, Dorothy from the Golden Girls. Because she played, I think, uh, Dorothy before she played Maud. So, um, or maybe it's the other way around. I'm not sure. But in any case, this is a friend of Dorothy. Uh, I put this up for some good money because the Golden Girls are hot right now. Especially, I, w I wish this was a Betty White. If this was a Betty White, this would be worth a lot of money. Because when she passed, her stuff just whoosh, shot up. Uh, in any case, it's really cute. I paid uh, two dollars, and it's a friend of friend of, and this is Dorothy, not Maud. I went to a garage sale in my community. Excuse me, I have a sip of coffee here. And I found these mugs, huge mugs. These are uh, Disney Gallery mugs. Uh, they got to be like a pound and a half. They're really heavy. And this lady had three. She had three minis and one Mickey. And uh, they were 50 cents each. She bought them for her grandchildren. I imagine her grandchildren couldn't lift these or were spilling it all over themselves because they're so heavy. But in any case, uh, I said, you know, let me try these. So I bought them. Uh, I do notice that there's kind of a Christmas theme. So she has Holly in her, uh, uh, her hat, the Minnie Mouse. So I, I could highlight that or not. I'm not sure it's a factor. And this is the Mickey Mouse one, and unfortunately Mickey Mouse has a little blemish on the other side, right there. Some of the white has chipped off, and the green is showing through from behind. But it's still, you know, I still get a few uh, a few bucks for this, I think, uh, beyond the uh, 50 cents I paid. And, of course, shipping is going to be brutal on this, because this is, I say, it's probably a pound and a half. You know, it's, I don't know, it's, like, it's not really something that kids would, it might be good for soup. You know, put it, instead of drinking out of it. In any case, I've got, I'm, so anyway, I've got three minis and one Mickey from this lady. So the whole total cost there was $2. I've got them listed. We'll see what happens with those. Um, I found these. They look vintage. I think they are vintage. There's no name on them. No, I mean, no manufacturer name on the bottom. But it's uh, San Francisco, California. These are, I guess, low ball glasses. And they were uh, $2 for the pair. And, um... They have little San Francisco landmarks on it. Just says it just says well, it just says Chinatown, cable car, Fisherman's Wharf, and you know for for a dollar each, I thought these are great. They're vintage. Someone might pay for these. We'll 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 have to see what happens. Um, don't really know. 
This one uh, got for um, a dollar fifty, but it's kind of cool. They sell for about fifteen on online. It's the, the, the good good sales on this. This is a um, a New York Times mug by uh, I can't read that Fishy Eddie Fishy Fish Fishes Eddie. Uh, I guess that's the manufacturer, and I've seen New York Times crossword mugs before, but the Fish's Eddie one seemed to sell in the $14 range, so um, I paid $1.50, and it's, uh, you know, hot coffee is highlighted right there. You don't, you can't actually do the crossword because the numbers don't line up with the, with the, uh, with the clues. It's just a little graphic they put on there, so this may do well. All right, are we, on, are we done with the mugs? Okay. Um... Yes, I believe we are. Let's look at some Funko Pops. I got these in the same store that... Uh, actually, my cousin is a pharmacist in Florida. And there's a store called Out of the Closet. And uh, there's a pharmacy on one side and a thrift store on the other. So actually, so technically, my cousin works in a thrift store, although he's the pharmacist. And uh, I went to see him in his store. There's two stores then in, uh, in um, Fort Lauderdale area. Uh, Wilton Manor and uh, someone down by Sunrise. If you live in that area, you might want to check them out. And uh, so I got these. These were all $5 each. This is the Mad Hatter from uh, Alice in Wonderland, the Johnny Depp version. I think there's a, probably another uh, version of these. I'm not sure. Not a big Funko Pop follower. I, I have my Nightmare ones up on the shelf. That's the ones I collect. But this was $5. Uh, Mad Hatter, Funko Pop. Hopefully uh, there's a following for this. And from the same film and the same $5 uh, price tag, we have the Queen of Hearts. And she's her box is a little more dinged up than uh, than I would like. Um, it's got a little crease here, and you know the, the Funko Pop buyers are like they're crazy about these boxes. And I'm thinking, you know, you you're buying the figurine, take it out of the box and put it on the shelf. And uh, in, any, in any case, she's in pretty good shape. She's got a few blemishes up here on, on the top. Five dollars. Then I found uh, these two from Beetlejuice. Actually, three from Beetlejuice. This is Adam Maitland. Uh, I don't remember. The, I saw the movie years ago. I don't remember this character or not, but um, Adam Maitland, he was $5, as was his wife or sister, whoever, whoever this is, uh, Barbara Maitland, whose uh, eyes are apparently in her mouth. Um, again, this is uh, $5. This is in really nice shape. There's a little schmutz on the side of the box. Actually, one of these has a little schmutz on it, but uh, I could probably get that off. So these were five each. And then in the Beetlejuice theme, still still with the Beetlejuice theme, we have Beetlejuice himself with the uh, guide hat. And again, I don't remember the movie. It was a long time ago. So people that are up on Beetlejuice might recognize the character or this part of the movie. Not sure. Unlike the others, this does not have a list of, of other characters on the back. So this may be a, uh, it's not a special one, but it, it's, it's not part of the, the regular group. So don't know much about that. Five dollars, and finally this one I'm, I'm debating keeping, although I don't have any Corpse Bride stuff. This is Emily from Corpse Bride. If I can find Victor, her partner, maybe I'll uh, I'll keep her. We'll see. That was a fun movie, Corpse Bride. And again, five dollars. Uh, these should all bring, I think, easily bring fifteen or more, uh, depending on the characters. Now let me uh, move these shirts out of the way, and uh, get into this last box of items. It's something I bought at a church. Well, actually, there's two things going on in this box. Some of them I bought at a um, church uh, flea market or a church fair. And uh, did I show you these jackets? Okay, these, this is something else that's been hanging in Florida before I get to the paperwork. These are a vintage, uh, I guess, 90s or 80s uh, members-only jackets. Uh, I bought these years ago. I think when I first started thrifting, and they've been hanging, again, hanging in the closet in Florida. This one is blue. They're uh, size 40. Uh, and they're called, I think they're called, well, they're not bomber jackets, but there's something along that line. They got the little epaulet things on top here. I don't remember what I paid for these back in the day. It was probably, you know, about five bucks each. And here's another one. It's a 42. And these have been hanging in the closet. I, I said, let me bring them back to Jersey and see if I can get them listed. Maybe someone will still want these at... Uh, this one's a 42. Members only. Uh, they, were, they were a big thing back in, I guess, in the 80s or 90s. Now, this is too heavy to pick up. So I'm going to show you parts of it. Right off the top, we got some sheet music. These were a quarter a piece. 
uh, Your Cheating Heart by um, Hank Williams. And We've Only Just Begun by The Carpenters. I think this one might have some, uh, you know, because everybody loved Karen Carpenter, so this might this might do well. And by well, I mean, you know, ten dollars. You know, it's I paid a quarter for these sheet music. Now, a thrift store by me also in Florida had these, which I started listing, and um, actually sold. These are travel books. This one's from uh, 1978 Universal Studios. Uh, these were these were. Um, what cheap charge me for these? 50 cents each. I thought they should be less, but they're 50 cents. It's all about Universal Studios behind the scenes, uh, the theme park in 1978. I'm not sure when that opened. This is a Winchester house, which if, if you know anything about Winchester houses, the Sarah Winchester built this house and she's kept adding on to it. It's got rooms and staircases that go nowhere and doors that don't open and all kinds of, it's, it's like a, it's just a, she just kept building and building and building. It's legendary. It's in the, it's in California. I was there many, many, many years ago when I first got married, probably in the 70s. So uh, it's still there in San Jose, California. And so I bought that's a tour book for that. These comic books don't belong here. Um, Pearl Harbor, the USS Arizona. This is pretty common. Uh, you buy these souvenir books when uh, you visit Pearl Harbor. I've never been there. 25 cents. I think this will do well because there are historians. Here's one on San Francisco. Uh, Again, it's got a map, and it's got, you know, a number of guidebook, San Francisco. This is Los Angeles. Same picture on both sides, maybe? No, no, it's got the uh, front. It's got the uh, nightscape there. 94 pictures in full color. Six Flags. I think this one might have some, some legs to it. This, this is Six Flags over Texas, 1978, I think this is. And uh, this, might, this might bring some money. These last three are the, are the big ones. Um... The uh, Six Flags Over Texas. Uh, this one I know will bring somebody. This is a uh, Disneyland. Disneyland. This is dated 1978. This was 25. This was 50 cents. They considered it a soft cover book. That's why it's 50 cents. Soft cover book. I consider it a brochure, but they charge 50 cents for these. And I said, yeah, I'm gonna do it because I think these will sell. And finally, the last one, also Disney, is is Small World. And this is really cool. You know, people love or hate. It's a small world. This is the whole thing. Probably Disneyland. This is 1978. It's got the uh, the characters inside from all the different uh, countries. It shows you how some of them are made. I think this is this is a winner right here. So that's it for that part of paper. Now, I have a big box I can't pick up. But I went to a... a, a um, church uh, flea market and there were all these things on on uh, air, air air airplanes and, and and aviation and I found these called these they're called the air post journal I bought the whole box for ten dollars uh, it's the size of a banker's box so you can imagine how many books are in here uh, these are called the air post journal and apparently what they are has has anything to do with airmail stamps so it covers uh, stamps and uh, aviation. And here's Amelia Earhart right here. And here is um, somewhere here is the last flight of the Hindenburg. And uh, inside, there's not much going on inside. There's, it's, I guess it's all about stamp dealers and things like that. And there's stories on, on first day covers for these uh, aviation stamps and anything that was aviation related, frontiers in space. Uh, I'm hoping there's an audience for this. The person who owned these, her name was Jan Lack. She was a pilot and a collector of uh, all this kind of stuff. So these little digest size air post uh, journals are one part of the haul. And then we have these things called um, air list ads. I don't even know what they are, but they were in the box. They were in the box, and uh, they all have these really cool little graphics of... Um, Airplanes, vintage airplanes. So uh, my phone's going off in my pocket there. And in here, I don't know, they're $4 each. Basically, they are advertising. There's, there's pictures and stories about different pilots and stuff like that. And uh, so these are part of that group. I'm not sure what we'll get for that. I got them up for like two fifty dollars a piece. Cheap. Cheap. And what I may do is take those down, put them up as a lot, just sell them as a bunch. Um, here are some more of those Airpost journals. 
Apparently, there's, a, there's more than I thought here. And the 50th, 50th anniversary edition of Flying Magazine, hardbound, September 1977. And this is dedicated to, see, here's the, the woman, the Jan, Clack, the Jan Lack Aeronautical Collection. Apparently, she was a big collector in Florida. She was originally from New Jersey. But this is a hardcover magazine dedicated to the, the it's all about the uh, 75th anniversary of the Wright Brothers. So if there are Wright Brothers people out there who like the story of the Wright Brothers, this is the book you want to have. I do have this listed already for about $39, our best offer. It's all about flying. There's all kinds of historical things here. There's stuff about space, uh, other planes that are not Wright Brothers planes. But the uh, st basic story of the magazine is uh, 75th uh, uh, anniversary of, um, of the Wright Brothers, I believe. And this is also, I may have my things mixed up, this is also their 50th anniversary issue of Flying Magazine. So this is, this is already listed. And um, more stuff. Antique Airplane News. There's a whole bunch of these. Uh, again, I haven't decided whether to sell these individually or list them as a lot. They have nice, each one has a different plane on the cover. Uh, this, is, this is not that. This is Air and Space Magazine from 1977. So you can see that there's a, for ten dollars I got all of this stuff and there's more. The bulk of it is still in the box, and um, let me get to that. Another antique digest, uh, air classics. So these are great for people who are into flying. Now the rest of the box, I think. Oh wait, there's more. There's, there's more of these things, more travel brochures. And you can see there's San Diego, San Francisco. Uh, Hearst Castle, well, that's not Hearst Castle, Charleston Country Cooking, it's a cookbook, Las Vegas, and you can tell these are old, these are from the 70s, uh, Oahu, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Hyde Park, one of the San Francisco, Amish Life from Pennsylvania, the Hearst Castle, these are all part of that quarter a piece deal, and uh, please let this be over, and then finally, the rest of the box is all of these called the Cross and Cockade Journal, which is a Society of World War I publication. Uh, in, I'm, I haven't read these. They're, you can see they're vintage. They're old typewriter uh, written uh, pages. And the date on this one is, um, let's see if I can find a date on this. This one's 1974. And this one is also uh, 1974. But I haven't gone far, as far back as I can get one out here with the staples on it. So here's one that's stapled together before they did the binding. And this one is dated uh, 1964. And it's all about World War I aircraft and military uh, stuff like this. So I haven't decided to sell these individually. There's got to be about 40 of them in there. Um, and what I discovered is they, 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 they were issued quarterly by this uh, Society of World War I Aero Historians. And so I'm not, I'm trying to decide if I could sell them individually or sell them in groups of uh, four, but I don't have every group of four. In other words, I don't have, I may have uh, spring, summer, winter, and I don't have fall. So I have to decide which way I want to go with these, or I could just sell them as a whole lot. And you know, the thing weighs about, you know, 15 pounds. I don't know what these books weigh, but uh, they're really cool. All this uh, aircraft stuff cost me just $10. The guy said, make an offer. Uh, you can see here's this, this. What are these? Look at these. Look at those pictures. The crosses on the back of the planes. And there's a piece of art. You know, very cool books. And I think there'll be a good market for this. So that is just about everything I wanted to show you today. I think the aircraft stuff's going to be very interesting. And I uh, hope to get it listed as soon as I can find out um, which way I want to go. If I want to go individual publication or I want to do them in, in groups or just sell the whole thing out at once. i got to look at previous sold. Had a minor setback or a major setback. My uh, camera, my trusty 35 millimeter camera, which I've had for eight years, uh, died. And uh, I've got to get that to a repair shop here in Jersey and see if I can get that thing fixed. Because I don't like using my phone camera. I just don't like using it. Some people love it. 
I like the 35 millimeter. My father was a photographer. I grew up with cameras all around me. So I'm more comfortable with that 35. But now when I snap the picture, it just comes out black. So what's happening is the lens isn't, isn't opening and closing properly. So in any case, that's a bit of a setback because it's, I can still use the phone, but it, for, for the, the, uh, the, um, the camera's much quicker because I have the card that just sends it right to the computer and um, very quick. So that's a bit of a setback. Hopefully we'll get that fixed and I'll get back to listing uh, new stuff. All this stuff has to be photographed and listed. Some of it is. Some of you saw it is the shirts are listed and some of the uh, travel boats are listed. And uh, that's going to do it. I mean, I'm glad to be back in Jersey. I had a, a good time in Florida. I did. Uh, I worked uh, nine home games for the New York Mets while I was down there. And um, we had a lot of fun with that. And uh, But the thrifting part of it was a little slow. So back in Jersey, looking to get back at it. I mean, I've got, you can't see behind me, but i got a ton of stuff in this room that needs to be listed. So uh, I may just concentrate on that for a while and uh, get that stuff going. But uh, please like, comment, subscribe below. I hope some of these things that you run across, you'll uh, pick up for yourself and maybe make some dollars on it. And uh, give me your thoughts below, and uh, we'll see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.